Kaitlyn Clark in traffic. That time too long, and Lee grabs the board and calls timeouts. And that was good execution because you get an opportunity to get Caitlin Clark a shot off of a quick pin, and then you have a quick step up. She just looks fatigued to me here tonight in ways that we haven't seen. Nine for 29 in this game, two for 13 from three, and also surprising, just three assists as well. Of course, not entirely in her hands, but something we're also not used to seeing in this Iowa offense, leading the nation in assists per game last year. They have just nine on 22 buckets. Look at our two All-Americans in this game, a couple 20-point efforts that we're seeing tonight. Well, the efficiency with Aoka Lee. I mean, her ability to get those 22 points, have those 12 boards, and everything difficult for Caitlin Clark and the Hawkeyes. I think back to last year where Coach Bluter gave credit to Maryland and Brenda Freeze. That was the best I've ever seen Caitlin Clark guarded. You might have to put this K-State team up in that category, too. Under a minute to play. If you're the Hawks and you get K-State to miss this shot, you have to get the rebound in this 2-3 zone. Ten on the clock for Sundell. Quickly dishing off. It is Gregory stepping up big time for the Cats. Jeff Mitty said, I'm not worried about Gabby Gregory. She's going to find her moment. She's going to shoot herself out of it. Finds the soft spot in the zone. There is no hesitation. Big shot, big money for Gabby Gregory. I just continue to be impressed by the way that Kansas State and Jeff Mitty's ball club have managed this game. It has been dictated their tempo, their shot selection, their disruption on the defensive end. And it has been consistent. There haven't been longs, there haven't been runs. It has been concentration and execution. Possession in and possession out, which is so hard to do for a 40 minute game. It absolutely is. They have risen to that challenge. The Iowa Hawkeyes coming out. With a couple of players from the bench, they're bringing back in Kate Martin, but they'll go with Sharon Goodman and Molly Davis to go along with Stolte and Clark. Shot clock. I should say game clock now reading 31 seconds. I think you got to be aggressive going to the rim. You've got to try to get a score, a foul, or a spray out for a three. And read perfectly by Jalen Glenn. She was stuck to Clark like glue. Well, this absolutely defense. fitting. It comes down to the defensive energy and effort, and that's length. That's discipline on the defensive end of the floor. High hands, gets a hand on it. Jalen Glenn able to create that turnover. Big free throws here for Jalen Glenn, the junior from Kansas City. She doesn't get the first. It's been a tough night at the free throw line for both teams. K-State 5 for 9. And Iowa has timeouts if they want to use them. Clark from the beak, no good. And Lee battling, it is Goodman who comes up with it. 15 seconds left, it's a jump ball. And no timeouts is going to be called by Iowa and Lisa Bluter. Well, Hannah Stolke does a good job of keeping the possession alive. I think Sharon Goodman should have just went up for that shot. Get it too, then you've got an opportunity to foul. Stokey keeps it alive. She's got a layup with like 17, 18 seconds, and time runs down when she's looking for a three-point shot. You just need a quick score. It's tough to defer in those kind of moments. It is. It absolutely is. Time and score, situations that a Hannah Stokey and a Sharon Goodman haven't been in because that's been McKenna Warnock. That's been Monica Sanano understanding those situations. It is a three-point game. 
Iowa basketball from the baseline. This is a team that's only hit two threes the entire game, both from the hand of Caitlin Clark. They're two of 19 combined as a team. It'll be Kate Martin with the inbound. You know the switches are coming. Caitlin Clark well defended. And signs is fouled to try to see if, if they can ice this with 9.3 seconds left. Well, again, just terrific defense, staying disciplined by Glenn. Caitlin Clark shooting a tough contested three in the corner. Sides, the freshman stepping up at the free throw line. Just fearless, Terrence Sides. And another timeout called by K-State. And they are feeling it in their huddle. The excitement, the potential of taking down number two on the road. And it's just been execution from the get-go. It absolutely has. They've controlled tempo. They've gotten the ball where they wanted it, when they wanted it there. Aoka Lee has been dominant inside. Gabby Gregory, she came alive at the right moment. And Jeff Mitty knew that she would. But this has just been picture-perfect execution on both ends of the floor for the Wildcats. 9.3 on the clock for Iowa. What's their game plan here? Well, Lisa Bluter is going to have a, a, an ATO right here drawn up to try to get a quick shot, a quick score. Certainly know that all the attention is going to go to, to Caitlin Clark. You just got to get a score and a quick foul. Could we see another top team go down? You just saw LSU losing to Colorado. UConn losing to an unranked NC State team. Of course, Kansas State unranked, but they're 27th in terms of points right now, just outside the top 25. But this would be their only sixth win over a top five opponent in program history. And looking to do it in back-to-back -back seasons against this Hawkeye team. Kate Martin again taking it out from the sideline. Gabby Marshall back into the game. Clark, a long three. It's short once more. The long rebound to Walker, and she's going to go up with it. K-State takes down Iowa, and take notice of these kicks. Five fifty-eight, the final, and Iowa has its first loss of the season. The question was, do the Wildcats have enough offense? Well, they had just enough, all they needed, because they locked in on the defensive end of the floor. They dictated tempo with their execution offensively. This is a team that is continuing to put the pieces together. Second-ranked Iowa falls to Kansas State in back-to-back -back seasons. A huge win for the Wildcats. Our final score, 65-58 here in Iowa City.